Welcome to the ASID Interior Design Buildings Index third quarter report webinar. Uh, we're happy to have all attendees uh, at this time and also those who are listening to the recording afterwards. Um, I'm amazed that this is our seventh year uh, for the ASID IDBI uh, index and also the survey. Uh, the survey launched in November 2010, uh, so we just it are actually eight years. Uh, so uh, we're proud to be uh, collecting historical data on the business performance of uh, the interior design industry. Uh, today, we have Jack Kleinhans, uh, Principal and Chief Economist um, at Kleinhans & Associates, um, who has been uh, working with us from the very beginning on the IDBI uh, report and uh, we're happy to have him uh, to uh, share the results from the third quarter of 2018. Um, my name is Susan Chung. I'm the Director of Research and Knowledge Management at ASID um, and will also uh, provide some comments uh, towards the end on some of the questions that we uh, asked our panelists. But let's First, start with uh, the results from the third quarter report. Jack? Well, thanks a lot, Susan. And it is uh, my delight to be able to join with you on this webcast. Uh, it is actually our very first survey began uh, back in, uh, in uh, I thought it was 20, 2011. So that would put it seven years. Uh, and. Um, so we have a, a lot of data actually to work off of, and we've got some information to provide you today. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, just run through some charts and provide a little bit of information and perspective. Uh, now on our first chart, we graphed here the three month moving average, which is the dark blue for the uh, IDBI index. So that's, we ask people, how are your billings uh, this month compared to last month, and then we put it into a three-month moving average. So the ex exact number for uh, that month would be September, which is just below the equator, about 49.8, I believe, for September. Uh, that would be the dashed blue line. But it, we like to look at the three-month moving average because you can see there's a lot of, a lot of movement in the data uh, oscillating about and around uh, a number of uh, uh, a, a number of uh, the indices. Uh, on the uh, red line is the inquiry index. So we're asking people how uh, how much have they uh, been contacted in terms of possible projects, not actually confirmed projects, but you know number of inquiries that they're receiving. And as the data shows in this graph, you know it looks like we we kind of peaked out earlier in the year. The March score of 58.5 was the high um, in uh, in uh, at the end of the second. Excuse me, at the end of the first quarter. Uh, not not too surprising, um, and to a certain extent. And we were talking a little bit before we went on air that a lot of people's plans begin in the in around the first of the year because um, there could be uh, weather related uh, issues of trying to get started any earlier than February, March. I mean, every, there's a lot of different climates in the United States, but nonetheless, for a large number of people, uh, they'll start uh, any home improvement projects or uh, be able to do some design work earlier in the year. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. People will have found out about their wages, uh, any bonuses that might be available. And of course, this year, uh, we had the benefit of the, of the tax uh, reduction. So there could be a bit of a movement in that data. And um, actually, the first quarter was not the fastest quarter for the economy. Actually, it was a little bit slower. The second quarter was the most uh, most expansive. We had like 4.2% growth rate in the GDP. So nonetheless, I think, what is this telling us? I think it tells us that we have some consistency in terms of, of performance. We're above the 50 line. And that 50 line means that we're uh, we're uh, registering an expansion, uh, both in revenue and also in inquiries. So our next slide actually breaks out the data uh, in a little bit more detail. 
uh, along uh, the lines of size of firm. As you can see, the red line is our smaller firm. Uh, the green line is our medium-sized firm. The uh, purple line is the larger firms, and we also have uh, sole practitioners. So, so the small and medium, the red and green, are continuing to report strong billings during the third quarter. Sole practitioners in the blue um, have sh shown a little bit of a softening that began uh, in the middle of the summer. Um, and again, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, you know a three-month moving average of the data and it gives us an indication of trends. The purple is um, indicating the performance for the larger firms. And, um, you know, they've gone up and down considerably uh, throughout uh, the last 12 months, but we've seen that pretty consistently. Um, but interestingly enough, um, I think it's the smaller firms that are, are, are relatively steady uh, in terms of their performance. We'll go on to our next slide, which provides uh, a little view, a view on how the, uh, how the industry is performing uh, by region. Now, these are large regions, of course, uh, for simple, simplification purposes. Um, you know, the Midwest, uh, you know, comes from all the way to Ohio out to the, the Middle Plains area, and we could look at the west from the mountains and further west. The northeast would be mostly you know, the New England area up through Pennsylvania and Maryland, et cetera. And of course, the South, uh, this is a broad area too. Uh, not surprising that in some ways the, the, the South has actually had a relatively good performance because those are population areas that have been growing over the last several years. There's been a major shift in the economy and in, uh, in the population from the Northeast and the Midwest actually to the South. But looking again from a three month moving average, um, you know, a great deal of volatility also, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the firms in the Midwest, uh, which again is that blue line, they were 56.1 was the index, the South was uh, 55.6, and the West was 54.5. Uh, so all three of those regions uh, were performing relatively well and on our view is being in an expansionary, uh, uh, an expansionary nature. However, the design firms in the Northeast uh, did slide a bit and have been under sort of under the equator uh, for most of the last 12 months. And that pattern has you know, been consistent and it's kind of consistent in other data that we've seen in terms of uh, housing and housing related markets. Our next slide actually goes into a little bit more detail on residential improvement spending. So it's tied to the design industry. And this number is actually derived from the census data. It's not an explicit number that it's actually released. You have to take the census data, the construction data, go to private residential spending and subtract out uh, the amount of dollars, amount of spending that's going for single family and multifamily construction. And then net out basically what we, we are calling here the residential improvement. And you can see we've had some fairly healthy amounts, actually very healthy amounts throughout 18. Compared to even 17, you don't have all the history being shown, but it's fairly a fairly um, uh, strong performance on a month, uh, year over year, year over year basis, uh, and, and sizable. Um, I think that we can explain some of this in terms of uh, the rising home equity uh, values, uh, they have helped to finance improvements. Uh, there's also uh, been the improvement in income, personal income. Uh, we've mentioned also, even from the standpoint that maybe tax impact could be influenced on some of this spending. However, one of the drawbacks and sort of a speed bump in, in, in home improvement and housing market lately has been uh, rising costs, uh, material costs in particular for lumber. And of course, uh, I'm sure everybody has heard of the shortage for labor in many industries, and it's particularly acute in the construction industry. Uh, so a number of those things could be developing a backlog of jobs, um, and it's just a matter of working, uh, working through the, the time frame uh, going forward. So our next... Uh, chart uh, looks at uh, the employment conditions. 
Um, you know, from an economist standpoint, one measure of the strength of a of an industry, its recent activity is its employment. And you can see uh, in this chart, and this goes back, actually, uh, the data goes back, I don't have it all presented here, but we have seen steady increases on a year over year basis uh, for the um, uh, the uh, for the design services for interior design, their job roles have been increasing on a year over year basis, as well as uh, you can also see in the architectural industry we we graph these because there's such a close approximation and sometimes there's design uh, services that are being provided by the uh, architectural firms also. And this isn't surprising when you start to put it as a backdrop. The United States uh, payrolls have averaged over 200,000 jobs per month this year. And more precisely, if we looked at um, the data uh, for the most recent data that I have actually not shown here, uh, there was uh, architectural jobs in, in August were up 8,300 jobs on a year-over-year -year basis. And then in, in, uh, in the interior design, uh, it was up 1,800 jobs. So uh, a, a, regular, a, a, a good solid, um, uh, uh, a good solid increase that we're seeing here. Final chart uh, reports out um, the ASID outlook against the conference board as well as the Dodge Momentum Index. Uh, we like to use this sort of as an indication and, and you know we probably somehow might want to figure out how to maybe index these uh, so they're all sort of in the same, but that's because the the differences that you're seeing is largely because of how they're being calculated. But I think we can just look from the trends and infer, which I will outline for you. The blue line is the ASID expectation out to the next six months. Now the number is 54.6. It's down from the June number, which was 59.6. And the March number actually was 62.7. And if we go back all the way to December, it was 65. So the high point that we've seen in, in the last 12 months actually probably coincided with perhaps the, uh, the legislation that got passed and sort of the positive outlook that people were thinking about how uh, the economy might be able to perform in business as well as people spending because of the tax plan. Now, the conference board, it's a uh, red line here. Um, it's a six month expectations. We just actually got a release today, so I'm gonna update you, but when we wrote the report, uh, the index was around about 115.3, which is up from June, 104. And of course, March was 106. You don't really see much differentiation because it's kind of the marginal changes. But now um, uh, our October number that just came out today is 111.0. So it's down from the, uh, from the September number. Uh, and um, actually, uh, I think I might have made a mistake here, 111, I think it's the November number. Um, nonetheless, uh, it's still very positive, it's elevated. Then we get to the Dodge data, and the Dodge data is a, uh, a monthly measure of non-residential building projects and it's supposed to lead, uh, lead uh, expenditures by about a year. Um, that number shows um, 167 for July. It was down 159.3. So um, that has sort of peaked out back in the middle of the year. And again, it's not surprising because we do see um, some fall off in spending that has been occurring in, uh, the, in uh, business investment in particular in, uh, in construction. So um, basically, to kind of wrap things up a little bit, um, I believe that uh, you know some of the softness we're seeing is not necessary of any concern uh, or indication uh, to the extent that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be losing um, or going into any type of uh, negative performance in, in the next quarter or even into the uh, next year. Um, I do believe that the softening in home sales and new home construction um, is important, um, but it's really perplexing in some ways because it's kind of disconnected with the overall economy as how the economy is moving. But 
Uh, these, these themes, I think, as we look at them, will be certainly affecting the interior design performance. And we'll uh, turn over the uh, discussion now to Susan. Okay, thank you, Jack. So in addition to the business performance questions we ask on a monthly basis, we also take this as an opportunity to ask our panelists a couple of special questions. Um, each month is somewhat different um, in what we ask, and we do try to um, compile historical data, so uh, mimic the question that was asked uh, the year before during the same month. Um, and some of these questions are uh, just to ask what they, what our panelists are seeing um, as they are doing their design work. Um, and at times, uh, we're also asking additional data um, on um, uh, some of the indicators that we also see uh, with the data. So, uh, for example, um, previous slides that Jack has spoken to, um, looking at the IDBI uh, data, um, comparing it to construction activity or payroll, enrollment, uh, uh, employment numbers. Um, we also try to ask our panelists to see uh, whether they're also uh, following uh, this or they, they see this. Um, reflected in their project. So in the, this slide, um, you'll see uh, the question uh, we asked was, has new building construction in your firm's area impacted project inquiries in a significant way this year? Uh, all in all, um, our panelists, 30% have indicated that they are seeing a positive impact in project inquiries. This is a slight decrease from 2017, where we saw 40% uh, uh, indicate positive impact. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it is a, a good chunk of our panelists um, that have indicated uh, positive um, sentiment on this. Uh, the chart on screen, in particular, um, does a uh, breakdown of firm revenue. Um, so you're seeing on the uh, far left, uh, firms um, panelists from firms that have less than $100,000 in revenue, and then on the right, um, 1 million in revenue or more. Um, you'll notice the green bars, which are the positive impact, um, slightly increase as you go um, as the firm revenue also increases. Uh, within the 1 million in firm revenue or more, uh, we do see um, that 60% uh, indicated a positive impact um, just within that category. Um, so uh, from this chart, we are seeing that those with a higher firm revenue um, do see more positive impact um, in their project inquiries due to the new building construction activity uh, within their area. Um, positive impact was also reported across all firm sizes. Uh, among sole practitioners, 19% reported positive impacts in project inquiries uh, due to local construction, uh, which was identical to uh, previous year in 2017. Um, within all other firm sizes, 43% reported positive impacts, um, which is comparable to 48% from last year. Um, and given uh, the two-year sampling from 2017 and 2018, uh, it appears that mid and larger size interior design firms uh, may be more dependent upon um, or take more advantage of local construction activity. Um, we're also noticing, if you look uh, at uh, the quote on the slide, um, that there's a lot of uh, dynamics between uh, what's going on. Um, so commercial construction is um, we're seeing a relationship with residential remodeling in a positive way, um, but on the other side, you can also say, see that um, a particular panelist uh, seeing that construction resources are taken away from uh, smaller businesses, which has a negative impact. So we're definitely seeing that uh, depending on the type of construction and uh, the size of businesses, um, the construction activity can have uh, several different dynamics um, that are in play. So the next slide, um, we look at uh, particularly small businesses. Um, seven out of uh, 10 respondents uh, 
do not feel um, that this is a good time for small businesses and in interior design to expand in the next three months. Um, this is uh, fairly similar to um, last year as well. Um, it is a slight, uh, slight decrease um, from last year. Um, so we're continuing to see um, that there's a, a slight um, hold on expansion um, for small businesses. And looking at um, this according to uh, firm sizes, uh, the sentiment is held uh, most strongly amongst sole practitioners, where 82% feel it is not a good time to expand. Um, and uh, when looking at region, uh, the Midwest had the highest con concentration, saying that it would not be a good time to expand. Um, on the other side, those that were a little bit more uh, comfortable uh, in seeing small businesses in interior to de design to expand, um, firm size wise, two to nine employees, um, firms with two to nine employees um, felt more comfortable that it would be a good time to expand. Um, and regionally, uh, South region and the West region um, were a little bit more positive in small business expansion. Next slide, um, we asked about uh, more of the seasonality. So thinking back on the past two, three years, um, when our panelists uh, saw business to be generally busy or slow, um, you'll notice that both spring and fall are pretty uh, busy or steady on average in business. Whereas summer and winter, you'll notice the green uh, bars are at larger proportions. So they're indicating that during the summer and winter months, um, business is a little bit slower when compared to spring and fall. Uh, we are, as Jack had mentioned, um, there are some seasonal trends um, that could be uh, attributed to weather conditions or what's happening on uh, in, in just large economic activity. Um, so we are seeing that uh, our panelists are um, also noticing this um, within their businesses. So uh, that kind of concludes um, what we have uh, asked in the uh, special questions uh, arena. As we're waiting for questions from our attendees, um, Jack, are, is there any additional remarks that you'd like to um, add as we're wrapping this well, webinar? Well, some things that I think we'll be looking at and probably curious about as we turn the calendar is, and, and perhaps uh, thinking about what might be happening in 2019 is, uh, we're seeing some inflation occurring in the economy. Um, it might get stoked by tariffs. Uh, it's likely that the tariff increases that are planned for the beginning of the year could actually influence uh, prices in general, as well as then consumers being the ones who are going to take the brunt. Um, and I think uh, that has uh, potential uh, to slow down some spending uh, and could have an impact on the industry. Certainly, uh, rising rates, interest rates on uh, home mortgages uh, have, have been uh, identified as a factor for some slowing in traffic that's uh, in existing home sales and to a degree for new, uh, new home sales too. Uh, affordability uh, is still reasonably attractive and uh, yet it has become more expensive uh, for a number of reasons, uh, financing a home today. I only bring these things up because I think that, you know, they're relevant uh, to our industry and uh, we'll be monitoring them closely. I think the fourth quarter the economy should uh, still perform at a really reasonably good pace, probably a little bit slower than what we saw in the second and the third quarter. Uh, we'll get the uh, GDP update this week uh, for third quarter, uh, but there is, is sort of an expectation that we'll probably uh, lose some of our momentum just because uh, the tax plan will be behind us and the fiscal stimulus that was legislated uh, by uh, Congress 
late last year is probably working its well where working itself through the economy. Great, thank you, Jack. Um, I don't see any questions coming in, um, but if you do have any questions, um, either after this webinar or after you've heard this recording, um, please feel free to reach out to Lori Enzignat, uh, Director of Marketing and Communications at ASID. I um, wanted to conclude that uh, after this webinar, you will receive a copy of the third quarter report and a copy of this um, recording. Um, and also wanted to note that we do, in addition to the quarterly report, uh, we do have on ASID.org um, all of our monthly snapshots. Um, so the IDBI is um, is released on a monthly basis. Um, we have a snapshot of uh, what we're seeing uh, in general um, on our website, in addition to a short blurb on the special question asked. Um, this upcoming uh, release on the October business performance data is actually on healthy materials. Um, just at, uh, attended Green Bills a couple of weeks ago and have seen a lot of movement towards um, looking at holistic sustainability, so not just focus on environmental sustainability, but expanding that on human sustainability um, with a lot of focus on health and wellness. Um, so we did ask our panelists on uh, healthy materials um, or uh, uh, designing for health in the built environment. Um, so stay tuned to uh, uh, learn more of um, on that in our upcoming monthly snapshot. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar. Um, thank you for listening in uh, on the recording. Um, we hope that uh, this has been uh, beneficial um, for uh, learning more about interior design uh, business and the industry. Uh, thank you.